skepticism. Your predecessors have solved that problem for you. You cannot tell the peer profession story without him talking about Dr. Alfred Salva. I would call him a founder, a creator, a fossil, you know, a, a, the brain, you know, so to speak, behind our profession. As early as 1968, uh, Dr. Sadra had already started to get involved. In the 1970s, he was one of the founding members of the peer profession at Yale, and he's extremely excited about our interprofessional uh, arrangement. Primarily, there was a shortage in primary care to physicians at a time when less and less physicians were becoming GPs and at a time when Medicare and Medicaid were signed into law and then adopted in 1966. We also had the experience of military corpsmen coming back and doing a marvelous job in Korea and in Vietnam, taking care of battle, severe battlefield injuries, for example, and then assisting surgeons back at the battlefield hospital. They come out into civilian life and there's really no role for them other than to be an orderly. I was lucky enough 48 years ago to be involved at the beginning. I thought it was well great to hear from someone that you've heard so much about, you know, one of the founding fathers of the profession. If anything, I think it motivated me further to be, you know, politically involved, to be involved further than just the nine to five job. Uh, I think that's what he drove home and what I've been wanting to hear and so now that I've heard it it's sort of like that is my passion is to sort of further the further the legacy of PAs. There are now 210 accredited PA programs which just blows my mind and then there are over 112,000 certified PA graduates so in contrast to 50 years ago. We now have 200,000 plus non-MD providers who are out there doing all kinds of things in medicine. From the beginning we felt that it would be ideal if NPs and PAs could be trained together and at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation we were looking for places to do that. You had some very innovative doctors and nurses here who did that and we came out and gave you a big grant in 1974. You're the only school, UC Davis, that continues to do this. And that's actually one of the reasons that I came here because I thought that the program was um, so innovational. I think it kind of just reiterated that for me and I'm just really happy to be part of this program. It was exciting to hear from the creator uh, talking about our program in such a positive way.